Hello everyone, uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a form submission using Ruby on Rails. Uh, keep in mind this is not going to be using uh, Ajax calls for submission, just normal submission. So basically I've created this uh, article application on Ruby on Rails and I generated a scaffold for article. and so before you start so this is going to be based on a user registration form so basically a sign up form and to get started we'll need to make a migration and a model file to hold our to create our users table and our users model so to do this just run bin rails generate migration create users table run that command and it should create a file that looks like this uh, that looks like this and you'll have to add these three uh, attributes so what these three attributes are, are basically the username email or password uh, because every user needs this to uh, identify themselves so once you have added this to the file now run you have to migrate the file by running bin rails uh, db migrate rails env development so this runs the migration and creates the users table in the SQLite 3 database. Okay. After you have done that, run the following command, generate model user. So what this does is it generates a user model and makes a user file in our models directory. As you can see here, the user inherits from application record and inside you can see some validations so let's go through them so this line validates the presence of a username so when you submit the form if the username field is empty application record will throw an error and the error will be rendered onto the form so the end user is notified of the error uh, this validates the uniqueness of uh, username. So let's say you have one user called testing1 and uh, another user is trying to have the same username. It won't allow it. You can't have two users with the same username, right? So to prevent this, we have validates uniqueness of and Rails makes it really easy to uh, do all the hard work for us. And same thing with email. You can't have uh, two users with the same email. So check for uniqueness there. And then you have validate email format URI mail to uh, email reg expression. So basically this validates if the user, uh, the email is in valid format. So let's say you have this. Well, this is not a valid email, right? So it wouldn't pass. But let's say you have this. Well, this is a valid email, so it would pass. Basically, it's checking for whether or not the email is valid. And it makes it really easy because all we have to do is type out one line of code and it uh, does everything for us. So this line validates the presence of a password and this line is pretty important. So this one uh, checks the confirm password field with the password field. Make sure uh, checks for case sensitivity and make sure they match using a string comparison. So and if all these validations pass, we should be able to create a new user record that is inserted into the database and then it will be redirected to the URL. So to do that, we need a controller. So bin rails generate controller users controller. 
So I'll run this command and it should generate the user's controller file which you see here. So let's go through, uh, go through these actions. So you have the new action, uh, making a new user instance. We'll need this model uh, to populate the fields. Then you have the create action. Create action creates a new user using user params. What user params is, is a method declared over here. And what this does is it creates a new user and it permits these parameters to go into these, uh, this user uh, hash. Uh, the reason we need this instead of just doing params user is because if you see here in our migration file, we have three fields, username, email, password. But in our controller, we have four fields. We have the addition of confirmed password. And since this field is not in the database, when it tries to insert it, it won't allow it because this field, this attribute was never defined. So that's why we need user params to let this uh, hash go into here and what this field will do is instead of being stored in the database it'll be used to compare this field password to itself co uh, password confirm make sure these two match and if they match then all these three fields will be stored in the database excluding this one so that's why we need user params instead of normal params uh, because if we did this, it would throw an error. So now we have seen our controller. Uh, so basically, we save the user, and if the save was successful, we would direct to root URL and say user created successful in a flash notice. Else, we re render the new uh, view. Over here, we're re re uh, rendering it initially. And yeah, and then hopefully the user submits again and it hopefully passes and goes to root URL. Uh, now before I show you the views file, let's see the route. So in our route, I have the root URL defined as articles index, which you can see here, which was the generated scaffold. And then I have to find a resources user. What this does is it creates CRUD uh, roots. So a new create, update, delete, uh, and others. And put. And let's see our views. Oops. So in our views, so in our views, I have one uh, file, new HTML. This is going to be our registration form. So let's go through this. We have form width, which is, which is a form helper. URL users path. So this is a named path, which is basically a shorthand for saying users. That, it, that is basically what it stands for. Except when you do it this way, this is you follow Rails convention, which is very nice. <clears throat> model user. So we define the user model and we tell that when we submit this form, we want a user hash to be created and all these fields will be inputted into user. So the end result will be. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, so the end result will be parameters. This is the big param object. Then you have the user model defined here. And then you have username, email, password, and confirm password as attributes in this hash, as keys in this hash. And these are the fields. So that's how it knows to put them in when you go form.text uh, form field, form.password field. Now this one's pretty important. So local true means 
you don't want to submit using JavaScript. You just want to do it with Rails, uh, the default Rails way. So with this, uh, the page will refresh when we submit. So keep that in mind and do form. And then we have username field, email, password, confirm password, and then the submit button. Uh, over here, we have form errors for user. So this is a custom helper that I made. Uh, so let's go to our application helper. In our application helper, you can see this custom helper defined. Form er uh, errors for object nil, so an optional parameter. Uh, render the form partial in the shared folder which is this file and object object so you can pass in the user object from here and it takes the user object takes out the errors and it displays it so let's see the view that should be generated so this is the error file the error partial file uh, content for form errors so form errors is defined in our application.html we'll go there in a second uh, we have honored the list and see it takes in the user uh, field and goes full messages error and for each error render a list element and put the error inside so now what is this form errors come from uh, so it comes from here application html.ebr we have defined yield form errors so this tells rails to render this file the contents of this file at the bottom of the normal content so basically we'll have the errors at the bottom uh, of the form so that's basically how we should uh, set it up and just thinking if i miss something and uh, no we should be good so now let's start up our server, bin real server. Now let's go to localhost 3000. Let's go to our registration form. And since it's in the new action, we need users new. We type this in and we see our fields. Now let's try a success case. So I'll type in my name, my email address, and a valid password. And let's click create user. And it says username has already been taken. So let's change this to one. And let's see and there we go so you can see the user created successfully message rendered from the flash notice that we declared in the redirect to see redirect to notice you created successfully it's being displayed so that's good so now let's try an error case users new and let's leave all this empty let's see what happens as you can see, you can see all the errors. Username has already been taken. Email is invalid. Email can be blank. Password can be blank. And password. Uh, let's try something. Let's see if the password confirmation works. So let's. I'm going to type in A. I'm going to type in B here, and this should throw an error. And it does so password confirmation does not match password basically these two fields have to be the same for the user to be created and redirected to the root URL so basically that's it um, that's how you create a basic submission form as you can see it's very simple if you follow the rails convention that's a key thing in Ruby on Rails following the convention that rails has mapped out for you because it makes it much easier to create RESTful applications and you do it in much less code.
and with much less bugs. So basically that's the video for today. I hope you guys learned something. I'll try to get this uh, code uh, uploaded into a GitHub gist. So if anyone wants to see it, they can copy it and use it for their own. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and see you guys next week.